My name is Reverend Robin Richardson, and this is the Cosmic Center of Spiritual Light. And we have these wonderful light beings here in person on Zoom and on Facebook Live. So we appreciate you coming here on this lovely Sunday morning. Uh, I have a wonderful uh, sermon. This is not on. Uh -uh. Hello? Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. All right, David. Tech guy. That way we don't have to fight people hearing. Give them one second. Is it on now? It I'm was on. It. It hit the bottom. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Beautiful, wonderful. So now we have Mike here. We have Mike online. So they were, were absolutely in sync. And we're going to open ceremony. I'm going to have these beautiful uh, sound bowls going. And I'm going to go ahead with the crystal harp. And we're going to open this wonderful sacred space and set the intention with our frequencies, with our consciousness, and with sound that permeates all levels. The service today is going to be on ancient chants and healing tones. And I think you will love it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do a lot of chants today, but I'm going to give you a lot of the background on ancient chants and why they work physiologically, emotionally, and spiritually. And then we're going to do the chants together to bring our lovely lights together in harmony. So if you would start with the beautiful sound bowls, and we will set sacred space, bringing in all the angelic realms, the avatars of light, and your special avatars of light. Bringing in that lovely, wonderful essence. that is important when we go 
up in the musical chronological scale because there are studies that show the human voice in when it's chanted in a musical scale helps reduce cancer cells. Mm. So that's in a musical scale as you go up. speak up a little bit until we get our mics on board and we're going as we opened everything up we're now going to have a beautiful prayer this is a prayer for paradise on earth for now of all times we sow peace great god of light we behold your plan unfolding whereby all spiritual clouds are dispelled, impurity and error cleansed. From the realms of spirit and matter, the age of light and joy is being born through your infinite compassion. Misguided forces awaken unto truth and negative practices cease while forces of light unhindered Restore the world to peace. All of nature receives your loving influence and finds its rightful place. Peaceful clouds move across brilliant skies and the fragrance of countless flowers floats upon the air. Abundant harvests glorify the earth. Every corner filled with happy voices Boundaries between countries vanish, and ancient conflicts disappear as if dreams. All people are united, encircled by your light, and guided by your wisdom. Through service to humanity, all are blessed with health, peace, and prosperity. Great God of light, strengthen us with courage and wisdom to follow your will and realize paradise on earth. That is a beautiful prayer that you can find at the joerayfellowship.org. And I love it. I open my day up with it every single day. And you can find it at www. Thank you. Wonderful brother of light. <laughs> my PTSD just vanished. <laughs> the oh, technological man. complications. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Just so you know, this is a collaboration of light, okay? And of all of our spirits and souls coming together to learn to grow, to magnify the Creator's love. So every single person here has needed desperately and on earth and I want you to remember that so every single person that comes here today has a beautiful light and thank you for being here this is a solemn beautiful day today that we will grow together so what I'm going to do that's the prayer for paradise that I absolutely love and what we're going to do I have been teaching everyone about the Essene uh, uh, gospel of peace. And in it, there is a wonderful uh, prayer to the mother. But we're going to ask uh, before Catherine has to leave, our lovely sister of light. So I'm going to have her do the regular Lord's Prayer, and then I will do the mother's prayer. So if you can come up. And that's the Lord's Prayer with our Father. Our Father, who art in the heavens, let thy name be sanctified. May the kingdom come, let your will take place. As it is in the heavens, so also upon the earth. Give us today the bread for this day. Forgive us our sins, as we, for have, have we, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into the hands of temptation, 
and deliver us from evil. Amen. 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 amen and amen. Beautiful. And the Essene Gospel of Peace has some wonderful instructions, and it's literally from Jesus, his very words. And so I have taught uh, upon this in the past, and you can look at some of the previous uh, sermons online. And uh, if you want more information, I can give it to you. But this is uh, what Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer, but he was also teaching his fellow Essene brothers. And there's also a counterpart, and that's the mothers. That was the father, and as always, there's two united, right? Our mother, which art upon earth, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done in us as it is in thee. As thou sendest every day thy angels, send them to us also. Forgive us our sins as we atone all our sins against thee, and lead us not into sickness, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the earth and the body and the health. Amen, 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 amen and amen. So are the very words of our Jesus the Christ. And we're going to be doing a lot of uh, information today in the Hindu religion, the Sanskrit, but this church is absolutely open to all religions, and we take the beautiful, wonderful, good elements of all and embrace them. For even Jesus the Christ was inclusive and embraced everyone. So as we open our hearts to be filled with the instructions today, let's take a beautiful deep breath in. God of our heart, God of our realization, beloved benefactor of the cosmos, creator of love divine that creates and generates all universes, come shine down upon us and in us and into us. Fill us with your holy magnificence. Awaken us, activate our spirits, set us on fire with your grace and love. Empower us, O Lord, to be fully activated. We are your sons and daughters, made in your image and in your love. Shine down upon us and help us serve humanity. Help us acquire virtues, find our path of service, and lift the veils of forgetfulness. And let us receive enlightenment to help light the world. Now today I'm going to be uh, reading, and I have uh, spoken about this book before, and I love this author and who he is and what he represents. So this is from the book, uh, Med Meditation is Medicine. And in the past, we've done the Ascending the Frequencies with um, a wonderful author that Ruth has taught us. But this is, I'm going to turn you on to, he's kind of, he's Hindu. But what he is, is he's a medical doctor. And he's a master uh, and in, in meditation and in following a certain Hindu path. And so I love him because he's able to combine the scientific realm with the ancient knowledge and show us that science is going to validate all these ancient practices. And so we're having a merger today, literally, of technology, information, science, and spirituality. And he's going to show us, and he uses it in his practice, for healing many of his patients. So chants are healing, and we're going to show you some of the reasons why, and you'll start to realize that the ancient ones had access to knowledge. So when all this came down to us through the ages and the aeons, it was with science, it was with validity. And let us remember that what sound is. The universe was brought into existence and sustained by sound. See, and God said, let there be light. Said is a vibration, right? And these sounds are harmonic frequencies arranged by God, Mother, Father, God, themselves, to bring forth certain structures and organized forms. And that is creation today. 
And all you have to do is go into Genesis. Sound was embedded with thought and light from our creator. And we are made in his and her image, given the power to visualize and vocalize, create and affect matter. And that's what we're going to be doing with chanting and with our consciousness. So the ancients knew that vibrations and chanting was healing. They knew it was powerful and they held it sacred. Science today will verify that the choir members that were all hooked up to EKGs when they were singing, they were singing a song and guess what? Their hearts started being beating in synchronicity. Isn't that, that's in unity. So when they took choir members, they hook them all up to EKGs and they sing a song, their hearts start be beating together. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. So we synchronize together. And so all of us, when we come together, we affect each other. And we sing our songs and we unite together. So when we can unite our consciousnesses, think of the beautiful synchronicity that we can do together when we're in harmony. So ancient languages, and this, and I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of this, this Grama Kelu, and this is what uh, this wonderful, he's a master yogi teacher, and I'm going to give you his name, Dharma Singh Klasa, MD, okay? And he's literally been following a path for his whole life. But he spoke of this, which I found very interesting because as many of you know, I've been a Rosicrucian for decades and decades and decades. After it gets to be 20 and 30 years, we will mention more years, okay? <laughs> but they spoke of, even in the Rosicrucians, of this ancient language that was composed of vowels that they had heard of, and they had been in tune with the, the Great White Brotherhood, and that they would get together and sing this beautiful language that was composed mostly of vowels. So I've been hearing about this language for decades, right? Interesting that he speaks of an ancient language that was the precursor to Sanskrit. Very interesting, right? So it's, they call it this ancient spiritual language and it's derived from the Sanskrit. Har Har Wahe Guru is this beautiful chant that he was able to find that they spoke in that language. And that means God's name takes you from darkness to light. So this particular guru, hundreds of years before, his name was Teg Baha Buru, used this beautiful chant to achieve unbelievable enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Yo, that was the chant. And this is this the God in my soul takes me from darkness to light. And so part of this, they have certain intonations and vowel chants, and that's why we are going to use some of the Sanskrit. But we also have to know what the meaning is to attach it. And most of us don't know Sanskrit. So I will always come in with the English equivalent because that's you have to know what the meaning is. Now, interesting, I want you to realize that in all the ancient chants, the vowels have the power and they have been elongated. So when you do a chant, you want to elongate that vowel. And then focus on your third eye. And so the vowels hold a lot of the power. And it's very interesting that both in Hebrew and Egyptian, like even in Hebrew, the vowels aren't in the written language. Either Egyptian, either. Very interesting that they withheld the knowledge <laughs> to the masses in written form because the vowels hold the language of the power, right? And I have spoken on this before, and you can see it in the, on some of the YouTubes, but you'll see the vowels create the glyphs. So how did the ancients know that? You see, there was a at another time, perhaps during the golden eras, or the Kali Lugas, 
we had that knowledge. But if you chant and you even put, like, say, sand on the, the membrane of the sarcophagus in the king's chamber, yeah. when you chant the vowels, especially in Hebrew, it'll form the glyphs. So sound organizes matter. And it's interesting, I want you to understand how powerful those vowels are. It organizes matter, it affects us at a cellular level. All sound is vibration. Even thought is sound vibration. And that's with Dr. Emoto. Your, your thoughts affect water. It can literally produce crystals in the water. Sound waves vibrate to the outer recesses of the universe towards infinity. So our thoughts reach out to the universe. We have to know how special we are. We have the power, the Adamic power of consciousness, pure consciousness, to literally magnify our thoughts to the farthest reaches of the universe. Sound especially affects the neurological and endocrine systems. And when we speak or chant ourselves, it produces powerful vibrations, which affect us directly. So not only is it reaching the universe, but it's literally reaching inside of us directly. They strongly affect the brain, the pituitary, and the hypothalamus. And this is from our wonderful meditative medical doctor. Do you see that? And he's giving you all the studies, which I, that's why I love him. He can merge both the East and West, right? When we affect the pituitary gland, and that's the master gland in our body, and it's the master gland of the endocrine system, wonderful physiological actions take place within it. It literally increases the function of the gland itself when you chant. What do we know about chanting and its benefits medically? We know it improves immune function, works the hypothalamus, pituitary axis, it increases the brain hemispheric balance between right and left. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. It sends the etheric energy coursing through us. It quiets the inner dialogue. And as some of you might know, I'm a mental health counselor, but when people are having anxiety thoughts and they can't unlock them, and it just keeps going, mm -hmm. sing or chant, it stops it in its tracks. Because when you're so focused, you see, then the rest goes away. Mm -hmm. so, so just remember the singing and the chanting can even help anxiety. It helps to potentiate the proper replication of DNA, thus helping maintain genetic, generic integrity of the DNA. Isn't that amazing? So this is something that we can do. We can call our reality literally manifested on Earth. We have the same, let's say, smaller power on Earth that God has when he created the heavens. We have consciousness. When we think something, we can say it, and we have the body to enact it. That's amazing. We're a little spark of the divine. But now we can also heal our own DNA. So we are truly made in his image, his and her image. We also know about the theta state. When he's talking about this brain hemispheric balance, I do hypnotherapy and I'm, I do guided imagery, and all it is is a theta state, it's a relaxation state. When you can get your body to relax, at that point in time, that's when brain entrainment begins. And that's when you can access more knowledge because you're not so focused with the frontal activity up here. That's all that is, is a theta state. If you can get someone relaxed, the immune system comes on board and the T cells increase. Look at this. This all happens and we're all capable of it. We also know they've done studies on 528, the frequency of 528, and we know that when blood is exposed to it, from a DNA level, it literally repairs the telomeres. So certain frequencies, along with those of the sound emanations, but think of your thought issues when you combine them together. 
So the meaning of the mantras imprints upon our mind and our emotions, which can create healing power for us and others. Many positive or healing benefits occur because of certain sound frequencies, 528 being one, and now we're all talking about sophageal frequencies, but I'm gonna to talk to you because I've already discussed the sophageal frequencies, but you're gonna see I'm gonna talk about this F sharp later. So there's vocal movements this, that affect and specific mantras create. So when you do a certain vowel with a certain consonant, it literally strikes the upper palate and it's creating certain vibrations within your, your body. So that's why we are going to do some of the chants with the Hindu language because of the vowels and the certain consonants that they, that they enact. Ancient mantras, thousands of years old, from this other age, from what I believe was in the Kali Yuga when we were in the Golden Age. Because the Hindus speak of every 26,000 years, you go through another age, you see it's broken down. You're going from a lower age in an ascending order and higher frequencies till you hit this golden age, and then it falls like this ebb and flow of civilizations in our consciousness. So what the ancients knew could have come from that golden age. That's where more knowledge was known. And these specific vowels were chosen in these mantras because of the sounds that they contain. They contain many vowels in combinations with these certain consonants, which have strong direct actions because of the way they make the tongue strike the upper palate. The striking force is carried to the pituitary, which we all know how important that is, and it's only a few millimeters away from the upper palate. That's how close that is. Almost all cultures and religions use chanting. There is basically a universal acceptance of vibratory sound as a spiritual conduit. All cultures around the world use it. If done with an open heart, open mind, and open soul, an almost magical convergence of time and space can occur. And people will speak of that when they're doing chanting, they can have a samate experience. Many people will talk about that, but you're getting the breath going, that's prana, that's energy, right? You're invoking that, bringing that in, you're tuning your mind. You see that and you're staying on board and you hit that brain entrainment, that connection all the way up. So that divine power of all creation can be felt when we can get that wonderful frequency within us and align to it. We are in the age of Aquarius. It can be the age, and it is the age of information. And it's important to us to adjust to this new information in a positive way. However, it can also create crisis and opportunity. It's like the Chinese symbol. Crisis is the same sign for opportunity. And because of that, we are in the age of Aquarius with all this technological information now being spread across the world. We need to be aware of how to use it in a positive fashion. And this information from these prior ages needs to be brought forth. We need technology that will propel us towards positive choices and cancel or protect us from negative energies. And I think it's really important for us all to know that we have to make that choice. We need to take the button and turn it off if something doesn't resonate to us. We can get back out in nature and not always be exposed to all the technology. You see the internet, whatever is going on, we need nature again but we have still the choice and we can choose to use things in a positive, constructive you know, way. So spreading love and light. And if it doesn't serve you, you have to know to walk away. We'll talk about that with frequencies, could just imagine the Rife frequencies. Raymond Royal Rife was a wonderful inventor and I'll go into that later, but he knew that certain frequencies can literally shatter cancer. But 
So that's why we have to be cognizant of how to use the power and use it wisely for a positive direction. We need to understand the science of sound, or as the ancient masters called it, there's a name for it, Shabbat Guru. Shabbat means ego, means to shut off, and Guru, Gu, means darkness, and Gu means light. So you shut off the darkness, turn on the light. Isn't that wonderful? <clears throat> That's the science in the Hindu religion that speaks the science of sound. So this sound shuts off the ego and takes us from darkness into light. That's what that means. Helps you rise above your ego and come into full consciousness of your own divinity. So we can use this vibration and words to reach or touch the very beauty of God. And God said, let there be light. So let us also do that, you see. We bring the light in, shutting away the darkness. All vibrations create sound. God creates vibration and organizes matter, organizes the universe, and brings it into being. Every atom in the universe is vibrating. The science backs that. Everything is energy. Everything is consciousness. The ancient practice of Nad Yoga, or the Yoga of Sound, has distilled has been distilled over many centuries. Certain specialized sounds that resonate and harmonize within the initiate vibrates to the universe. We also know from a science perspective that chanting certain sounds increases the function of neurological components, which can then help make spiritual perception possible. Now I'm going to go into the F sharp. So F sharp, I've been hearing about in the mystery schools for decades, that it was really important. And we even know that in the king's chamber, the king's chamber resonates to F sharp. So even when we do chants, we can do in our minds, that's even holy, before we go to sleep and when we wake up in the morning, when we, do, when we wash the dishes. Uh, we, we can be singing to God. We can be singing to the universe, right? Doing our beautiful chants. But I wanted to show you that certain frequencies or certain notes have specialized power. So Tom Danley, he's an acoustics engineer who worked for NASA. I just wanted to introduce you who he was. And he was invited to Egypt by the producer of the movie, The Mystery of the Sphinx, to measure the sound in the king's chamber. He uses very sophisticated equipment. We send you with love and light, Catherine. That's our beautiful sister of light. Thank you for coming and for serving. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I know you're helpful. Yeah. And so he was invited into Egypt with the king's chamber, right, to measure the sound, even in the infra, infra sound, you know, level. So the sophisticated equipment that he used showed his, his it was a pattern of frequencies which roughly form an F-sharp chord. It was roughly tuned to F sharp octaves. So it's not just one F sharp, but many different differing octaves. And that's the king's chamber, right? Danley goes on to wonder if these infrasonic tones were used to alter brain waves. And what did we just get through saying when we chant, when we use specific, you know, special sound frequencies? It can create that right brain, you know, you start to have that synchronicity. Did you see this? So now you're actually seeing kind of proof here that the ancient ones who erected it, the Giza pyramid might have known something special about F sharp. And there's also a lot of information that the sarcophagus, the people that was used for, to initiate uh, mystery school members and that they would lay in the sarcophagus, you see? And the, so there was a whole uh, initiatory process that the initiates went through in the king's chamber. 
but it's interesting that it seems to be tuned to F sharp. So we know that he's even, uh, we know it's F sharp, but Danley's even showing that the sarcophagus itself is tuned to a hertz frequency of 438. It's giving you special frequencies. Now, Dr. Robert Schock, and I'm sure you have seen him on a lot of the, the ancient mystery schools um, and documentate, they've got uh, documentaries, but he's on ancient aliens, he's on a lot of those you know, documentaries. So he's from the uh, Boston University, and after his study, he studied intensively of the Great Pyramid, he said it was like a great big musical instrument. Mm -hmm. And then we hear legends of the people in the Middle East that were saying that the people were drawn there from ancient of times, and they would use certain specialized sound frequencies to heal people. So that's matching. Science is starting to match some of the legends of the Middle Eastern. Um, you'll see in some of these documentaries, some of the people that have lived in the Gaza, or the, not the Gaza Strip, but in, the, in Egypt, they speak of a time and they were in the chambers and speak of their parents and their grandparents telling them, these are the legends, the oral legends, that the pyramids were used for healing and people would come from you know, many distances to be healed. Now, what they have found out is Paul Horn actually made music to match these pyramid frequencies and you can look him up online and listen to it, but it was F and F sharp, a and A sharp and C and C sharp. So those are the pyramid frequencies. Interesting, it matches not just in Egypt. F sharp is regarded as the tone of the earth in the ancient Chinese culture. It's who. And you've heard people chanting who, right? It's a god of some creation. The Native American flute makes their flutes to it. I actually have one in F sharp. So they tune their, their flutes to it. So let's talk a little bit about Pythagoras. He believes that music was medicine and he had mystery schools in Crimea. And every day he'd bring them in and, and play special frequencies and took time for that. And he developed his own mystery school. So Pythagoras was science oriented, but he was a high, high mystic, created his own mystery schools. That's where you get the Western mystery schools there. Now, quantum physicists have proven that this ancient mathematician was correct. All entities in the universe do emit vibrations. Physicist Fritzhoff Kopra, in his book, The Tao of Physics, quotes, rhythmic patterns appear throughout the universe from the very small to the very large. Dr. Jeffrey Thompson, director of the Center for Neuroacoustic Research in California made tape recordings of the wind, waves, animals, and humans. There, and then he reduces it to their basic primal rhythms and the tones actually matched NASA's recordings of what deep space sounded like from the emanations that were emitted by planets and stars. It's the same. Isn't that interesting? So science is matching what Pythagoras is talking about, about the music of spheres, right? Science NASA just backed it up. And then it's being played here on Earth in our own voices and in the animals, right? It's beautiful. Our very own Albert Einstein said, Concerning matter, we have been all wrong. What we have been called, what we have called matter is energy, whose vibration has been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. There is no matter. What we do know is that all matter vibrates at specific rates and everything has its own melody. Inside of us, to the planets, the galaxies, and again to Pythagoras, the music of the spheres. The musical nature of nuclear matter from atoms to galaxies is now being recognized and validated by science. So let us now 
Remember to use these healing tones to imbue the healing and magic to all of us. Researcher Alfred, and I'm going to turn you on to him, Tomatis has shown that sound can treat the nervous system disorders. Human cells respond to sound, and in one experiment, this is where I was fascinated. In one experiment, cancer cells were exposed to sound vibrations from musical instruments and the human voice. The most effective sound was the human voice singing a musical scale. That's where I started off with this, with the scale in my heart. Isn't that interesting? As more notes and tones were added, the cancer cells began to destabilize and disintegrate. Now, I will also tell you, if you're interested, to go to Anthony Holland at Skidmore College on TED Talks. And he's going to show you literally this beautiful instrument that he did. And certain frequencies, they will expose it to, to like bacteria or cells. And when they hit the certain frequency and stay on it, those cells disintegrate and all the healthy cells around it are fine. Mm -hmm. And they've had really good results with leukemia and some of the other cancer cells. Now, what Anthony Holland, I love him for doing this, but what he should have done is give credit to Rife, Dr. Raymond Royal Rife, because that's where the frequencies come from. Dr. Raymond Royal Rife has, has done this. He did this back in the 30s and 40s and created the Rife uh, you know, machines. And then when he didn't, he wanted to release it to the world. And a lot of Mayo Clinic and the Rockefellers wanted to make money, the AMA. And when he didn't do that, you know, it didn't get released. So they literally almost took it from him and it was bad. So um, he, wasn't he in prison too? I, you know, I don't know. I know they went against him in courts. Uh, just like they did Nikola Tesla. When they want to do what's good for humanity, Nikola Tesla wanted to give us free energy. And look what they did to him, and they dismantled his tower. So Raymond Royal Wright is on the same kind of genius level. We could have been curing cancer. He proved it. And then, so you have powers that be that want to make money off humanity's hive, you know, and that's Central. hurting, that's awful. So it's now with the good use of the internet, we know this, we can be exposed to it. Now they can't hide this information from us. Do you see that? We can be empowered to know this. Bring those things back online if we can. So what we do know physiologically from chanting, what are the benefits? Lowered heart rate, lowered blood pressure, Reduction of stress hormones, improved output of melatonin, that's to help you sleep better, increased lymphatic circulation, enhanced release of endorphins, increased immune system function, and increased production of interleukin-1. All these wonderful things, they're wonderful. So the ancient masters of the Nad Yoga, that's the yoga of sound, know that there are 84 reflux points on the palate of your mouth connected to the nearby pituitary and hypothalamus. The tongue strikes these points and sends energy to them. So chanting can connect the brain hemispheres through the use of this repetitive, particular use of phrases. And it makes that mind, body, and spirit connection. You see, it just kind of brings it on, online. It also stimulates energy flow through the 72,000 nadis or non-physical energy channels in your body. That's like nerves throughout your entire body. Prana, which is energy from the breath, you see, from the universe, travels through these channels throughout your body, especially to the chakras. Most importantly, chanting mantras or primordial sounds can heighten the proper replication of DNA and the four chemicals involved. 
So science is showing that the ancient masters knew what they were doing. We can help rejuvenate ourselves. So what we're going to do, I have a little bit of time here, we're going to do, I'm gonna tell you about some of these chants, and then we're gonna close with this Om Tata Tu Tata Tu Tata Soha. It's a green Tara, okay? And we're gonna chant it 108 times, and I actually have it hooked up to this speaker. Um, but I wanna show you the healing, this is meditation is medicine, Dharma Singh Khalsa MD. This is what he is recommending in his practice. And he's showing evidence and, and efficacy with his patients. They come in with all these medical problems. And yes, you use the Western world, but they're also using the Eastern world. And it's helping. So he can show efficacy. But what I wanted to show you is that there's reasons for us to use the ancient tones and the ancient mantras. It can help us today. So what he is usually uh, telling most of his patients are just a few of these. I'm going to go through them. And then if we have enough time, if, if you have to leave, you can leave. But we're going to stay chanting some of these. So for those of you who'd like to stay, I'd like to keep you here while we chant together. But what I wanted to show you, this is the one he's using a lot, is this um, Rama Da Sa Sa Se So Hum. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, we have to know what it means because not only do we have to say it, but we have to know what it means while we're saying it. That's what imbues it with that emotion in consciousness and those other frequencies. This, and I'm reading from his book. I want to give him credit. I love this man. <laughs> okay. This powerful mantra is the mantra for healing self and others. And that's why I wanted to bring that because we need it and the world needs it and our loved ones need it. Filled with vibratory vowels and primordial sounds, it has an energizing effect upon the neurological and endocrine systems. The literal translation is as follows. Ra means sun. Ma means moon. Isn't that kind of beautiful? You're connecting you know, with the sun and moon. Da means earth. That's what we're, you know, you're connecting earth to heaven. Sa means totality of experience. So means personal use of identity. And hum means the infinite vibration. So when these words are combined, the essential meaning is, I am thou. Conversely, you can also say the service of God is within me. And for we are all to serve ourselves and each other, the world, the universe. So what he's suggesting is if you wish to heal yourself with this mantra, imagine a glowing green light around you as you meditate. To heal others, imagine that that green light is around them. And I would say, let's imagine that green light around us, our loved ones, and the earth and the universe, you see? So what I'd like to do is we're going to have a little bit of the sound bowls, and then I want to close with this uh, green Tata mantra, mantra, and I want to tell you what it means as we chant it, okay? But let's start out with just something um, simple, and we're going to use the ra ma da sa sa se so kyun. So if we can go ahead with this beautiful, we're going to do it all together with us. Let's start the sound. And we know what it means, right? I am thou. The service of God is within me. Ra is the sun. Ma is the moon. Da is the earth. Da means totality of experience. So we're going to sing this together. Ra, ma, da. Yeah. 
Person's needs are and the country's needs are. It means I am thou. The service of God is within me. Ra is the sun. Ma is the moon. Da is the earth. The infinite vibration. So let's say it three more times and then we'll. times. I'm going to have this beautiful, you know, you want to hear her, we're going to go with her, okay? And I've got the bells, which you're going to see this, and this is something that you can do even walking while you're doing any chores. And I want you to understand the meaning of it and why it is so special. What it means is I bow to the liberator, mother of all the victorious ones, 
being liberated from that samsara, that's true suffering or problems. So we're being liberated, we're being freed from all the suffering. Om, the sound of the universe, right? Tara, is the, she's the mother of all the Buddhas. She's the divine mother. She represents courage and wisdom and compassion. She is the fully enlightened female Buddha of Tibet. Tutara. What that means is liberate you from the eight fears. That's the external dangers, fire, water, air, earth, thieves, ignorance, attachment, anger, pride, jealousy, doubt, or wrong views. So you're being liberated. You're asking to be liberated from all of that, to be free, right? Chara liberates you from disease liberates us from true cause of disease, disturbing thoughts, and true sentiments. Tara to Tara to means to you embodiment of all Buddhist actions. I vow always, whether I'm happy or unhappy with the circumstances of my body, speech, or mind, you bow to the creative divine. Soha, establish the root of the path within your heart. Purify your body, speech, and mind, and achieve Tara's pure, beautiful, holy speech, holy mind. And isn't that what the Christ told us to do? All the avatars of light have said that. Think pure thoughts. Say pure thoughts. Do pure thoughts. So all in perfect alignment. So, I want you to realize that the OM is the power of the universe. Then you have the Mother Divine, right? You're asking to be free of true suffering, bringing right thought in action. Tara means path. It's the destroyer of darkness. Fire in the darkness. It gives you vision and protection. And that is what we're going to be chanting. So I'm going to set this up of the beautiful coming in again from the Essene, uh, the gospel, the Essene gospel of peace. We're going to set this up and then we're going to do the 108 chants and then we're going to close the service. Okay. From the Essene gospel of peace, we're going to be bringing in Christ and now we have the Tibet, right? Hindu, in total alignment. This is what Jesus the Christ has told us. And since it's almost noon, that's why we're putting this in total alignment. And this is what he's instructing us to do. And when the sun is high in the heavens, which it is, then shall you seek the holy stream of sound. In the heat of noontide, all creatures are still and seek the shade. The angels of earthly mother are a silent, are silent for a space. Then it is that you shall let into your ears the holy stream of sound, for it can only be heard in the silence. Think on the streams that are born in the desert after a sudden storm, and the roaring sound of the waters as they rush past. Truly, this is the voice of God, if you did but know, for as it is written, in the beginning was the sound, and the sound was with God, and the sound was God. I tell you truly, when we are born, we enter the world with the sound of God in our ears. Even the singing of the vast choir of the sky and the holy chant of the stars in their fixed rounds. It is the holy stream of sound that traverses the vault of stars and crosses the endless kingdom of the Heavenly Father. It is ever in our ears, so do we hear it not? Listen for it then, in the silence of noontide. Bathe in it and let the rhythm of the music of God beat in your ears. 
until you are one with the holy stream of sound. It was this sound which formed the earth and the world and brought forth the mountains and set the stars in their thrones of glory in the highest heavens. And you shall bathe in the stream of sound and the music of its waters shall flow over you. For in the beginning of the times, so did we all share in the holy stream of sound that gave birth to all creation. And the mighty roaring of the stream of sound will fill your whole body and you will tremble before its might. Then bathe and breathe deeply of the angel of air and become the sound itself that the holy stream of sound may carry you to the endless kingdom of the heavenly father there where the rhythm of the world rises and falls. So now that it is said, we're going to have us sing this beautiful chant of the green Tata mantra. We're going to set this off. Hopefully it's on.
learned about the magic of the hindi chants and all of our chants we can chant in english we can chant in tibet we can chant with the vowels we can chant in all the different languages combining our consciousness with the elongated vowel sounds activating the pituitary glands we know the physiological processes that happen. Healing begins with inside of us in the DNA field. But our chance, our consciousness can reverberate to out to eternity. Go on to this. Beautiful. So hopefully you learned the power of the chance. We've done them. We've brought our lights together. We appreciate each and every one of you coming. Thank you for sharing your light. Thank you for being here. And hopefully we chant as we go out our days, morning, noon, and night, singing the praises of God, the avatars of God. So we're going to close our service. I will ask of you, um, we, I come here every fourth Sunday, but should, um, Reverend Sharon Elizabeth is here. She's here the first Sundays and then the fifth Sundays. Um, we've got Amy Ean. We have Reverend Nancy, so we have many of our beautiful ministers here every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. We do have the farmer's market out once a month, so that's here if anyone wants to come. And we are going to ask if you'd like to, to have your little donation or donation basket. And the announcements, the events. Oh, oh, the events, okay. Why don't we come up, because we have many events. This is our Reverend Sharon Elizabeth. We're going to have her give you the events. <laughs> we have many things online coming on board. This is our wonderful Reverend Sharon Elizabeth. Baba Sharon. Namaste. I wore the right color. <laughs> yes, I at the right time. <laughs> anyway, um, all we want to say is that we have some exciting, I mean, really exciting events coming up. Um, and uh, What's coming up, let's see, well, we're going to have our wonderful Ken Lloyd, our soul braid, and uh, he may not be back around for a long time, so if you want to see him, he always does a free lecture, uh, that's going to be February the 11th, and um, he's on his way to a global mission, so we're very happy that he sort of planted his seeds here and we've launched him as well as other people too so um that you what you would do is go to the cosmic center spiritual light uh website and look at the calendar of events we also have uh some of you may not be familiar with the name but some of you might be is sarah brexman cosby if you are familiar with dolores cannon okay and if you're not check out dolores cannon she was a hypnotherapist, very famous, who were able to get into a deeper consciousness or, of people, her clients. And this is where, in that level, they talked about everything, past, present, future, the multiverse. She's very famous, Dolores Cannon, if you don't know her work. Well, this lady, Sarah Dolores, died, I think, about two years ago. This lady, Sarah, has the ability to do the same thing. So she's going to be doing a lecture on Atlantis. And again, this is people that are unconscious. They don't know what's going on. And their higher selves are talking about, well, this is what's really happening. And not only is it from an individual person, but it's been multiple people at the same time with the same information coming through. So with different people. So it's tapping into the collective uh, consciousness. So that's very exciting. And then she is going to do a group regression. And if it's anybody you want to do a group regression, I would say it would be Sarah for sure, being that she has this technique and ability. And uh, we're going to be having some wonderful local things here too. So on 2-2, February 2nd, it'll be Reverend Nancy, myself. We've been doing an ongoing series of manifestation on the portal openings. This one will be on 2-2, February 2nd. And then after that, we do have the Luna New Year, Year of the Wood Dragon. And we have our wonderful Lori Pauly, who is just a stunning a consultant in feng shui for many years, has her own school, knows everything that there is to know about this. She'll be here 
and telling you what the guidelines are, things that you should do, feng shui, to bring in the most of the wood dragon year. And there's many others, our regular ones that we do. We have the cosmic circle, we have the yoga uh, with Vicky, uh, Danielle has Qigong. So if you're not familiar, make sure you get our newsletter, number one. And number two, you just go into Cosmic Center uh, Spiritual website, Light. Spiritual Light, and go down there, sign up for the newsletter. So that way you don't miss anything. And also don't forget, we have a YouTube tra channel. So these are powerful chants. You'll be able to listen to them again when you go to the Cosmic Center YouTube channel. So that's about it. And we have the flyers outside for those of you that are there. Thank yes. you. you yeah. can. And we, we will close. I'll do, um, we did learn that the scale, literally with the human voice, that the scale helps literally uh, deactivate cancer. So I'm just gonna close off with a harp. And um, Clark does the law of one. Yes, the law, law of one, one every on Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. And that, if you're not exposed to that, you need to get exposed to it. That is of a higher, higher, higher level that got called in. I resonate to it beautifully. And so the law of one is fantastic, that's Fridays. So we have a lot of events here, please partake. This is the house of instruction, as Dr. Hertog had said. I do wanna bring this up because I attended the Cosmic Connection yesterday and uh, Patricia and Jill uh, Mui had talked about Sarasota being uh, one of the 22 cities that was of light. And it was called out by the Dr. J.J. Hertog and on the grid, it's a beautiful pyramid, right? And one of the cross circles actually came up years later. And our Reverend Cheryl Elizabeth was one of the original anchors of that. And so I, you know, we're going to, they're going to start reactivating that just to let you know. And so this whole city is a city of crystal light. I mean, it really is, it's on the ley lines. And so the dowsers um, doused it is up through Swift and Tuttle. So they have it mapped out. And we are one of the 22 gated cities of light. And even in the, the Keys of Enoch, the House of Instruction, is we are instructing and we have the Keys of Enoch and the Pista Sophia. Uh, Kim Converse teaches that through the, so that we also have that ongoing here with the, with the her talks. So again, the House of Instruction, the City of Light, one of the 22 gateways, right? So we're here. So we're going to close out. I'm just going to play the, the seven uh, tones. It's in a musical scale because we know what it does to the DNA. We learned that. And we'll close that out. We set space. We'll now close it and have it go into your heart. And if you so feel called to help us, we have a beautiful love donation basket here in person, or you can go to www.ccosl slash forward donate to drop in your beautiful light energy so we can continue this light mission in the city of light. So we're gonna close our service out and thank you so much for coming and partaking. All right, so I'm gonna just do my seven tones in the musical scale because of what it does. So at the beginning, we did the ascension. We're just now gonna close it out.